What's up, all my senior hooligans? Um, it's April 30th. We're almost in May. Hope you're doing well. A um, couple quick announcements. Um, I posted the senior survey in there. I told you all about it. Uh, you probably got an email about it, too, from your counselor. Most of you have, like, Rye, or you probably have, like, Morelos, or maybe some of you have Zetner. I don't think any of you else have anyone else. Um, make sure you uh, go ahead and do that and complete that. Um, there's like graduation stuff in there too. That's obviously going to be kind of important this year, um, for y'all. So make sure you go ahead and, uh, and, uh, actually open that up and do it. It takes like literally three minutes, um, maybe even less if you just like quickly pass through it. Um, but yeah, it, it gives us feedback on what we should do from here. Um, besides that, um, make sure you get your work into me by tomorrow, three 30. You are kind of, you guys are starting to really kind of understand the rhythm of this. Thank you for like emailing your stuff at one time. Just keep doing that. It makes grading way easier and less likely for me to like forget sometimes. So like if I put a zero, honestly, sometimes I just misplace or I accidentally delete your email because I thought I put it in. So just call me on it and uh, I'll double check. And usually y'all are right. Um, so yeah, uh, make sure y'all doing that. Today's video is gonna be about unemployment, which right now is very real. Um, you're gonna get a worksheet about unemployment, but I'm not gonna sign it with this video because it's Thursday and I already gave you a worksheet this week and I'm not trying to do the most. So I'll just attach it for the worksheet for next week. Um, but be on the lookout for that, that'll be a next week thing. But let's talk about it now, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. Google Chrome, okay. Unemployment, fun times. So, unemployment means not having a job. Unemployment is another way we measure how a country or a region's economy is doing. Um, currently, the unemployment rate, and it's so sad because when I showed this like a year ago, I think I even showed you guys maybe a few months ago, it was at like 3%. And I don't know if they've updated it, so if you notice, um, can we explore more? Explore more. Um, let's see. So this is like the history from 1950, we see here, up to 2020. And if you notice, there's patterns. It goes up, down, up, down, up, down. Um, so our, our economy generally has to go through purges. It, it's kind of, and we'll talk about this, it's kind of how like, a recession and, uh, and a growth period, it has to, they work in patterns, it's kind of like the circle of life. Um, eventually, when we have too much growth, there's usually going to be a downturn because we've overinvested, we're overinflated, we're, we, we're actually spending more than what we really have. Um, that'll make more sense soon. Um, there's various reasons that like economies go up and down and why and and we'll get to that but um we can just look historically at the trends and if we notice you know um we have a couple peaks here the first big peak was in the mid uh early 80s this is when reagan became president um there was uh various reasons for the early 80s kind of economic crash it was a recession um had to do a lot with like foreign oil prices. Um, it also had to do with, this was kind of the beginning of when like the American factories kind of really started shutting down. Um, we adjusted though, and then by the end of Reagan's presidency, un unemployment was low. Then of course, you know, goes up and it goes down. It was really low around 2000s. Um, that's because there were a lot of the new technology companies like Google and Yahoo. And so people were, the dot com thing was kind of going off. Um, and so things were really good then. But then the reality was there were too many of those dot-com companies, so we had another recession. And then things were good again until we had the Great Recession of 2007, 2008, 2009, um, where we went up to 10%. Now, ever since that point, we've been having a really, every few months we go down a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. And then, you know, we were at 3.5 just in February. It was great. I mean, it was arguably the lowest almost on here since the 50s. I mean, 3%, it doesn't get much lower than 3%. 3% is considered the healthy number of uh, unemployment because just with the amount of people that change job, quit, businesses that shut down, 
that's considered like a normal healthy number. It's theoretically impossible to have 0% unemployment in a capitalist society because as long as there's competition, there's going to be some type of unemployment. Um, but if you look, and unfortunately the, the graph doesn't do a good job. Um, February 2020, we were at 3.5%. We are now at, a month later, there was over like a percentage growth in unemployment, 4.4. When April comes around, it will probably go up to five, six, who knows? I mean, you guys have probably heard about, I mean, if I just put unemployment in the like Google News, um, unemployment, like millions, I don't know how to spell. Um, 30, I think like the number is like 30 million. U.S. jobless claims climbed 3.8, pushed corona, coronavirus. Since the virus kind of shut everything down, 30 million people. That's crazy. There's only about 340 million people in the United States anyways. 30 million people unemployed in a month is crazy. We haven't seen anything like this since the Great Depression. And the funny joke is, and all my friends always talk about it, is when I was your age, I was just a little bit younger. I was a freshman in high school, sophomore in high school. We went through the, the Great Recession. You guys, so y'all might have been like just babies, I guess. No, you, you were like kids. Um, so I was old enough to really remember when all my friends' parents lost jobs, like my mom lost her job. Like, you know, it was stressful. People were losing their homes and stuff. Um, this recession, which is kind of kind of a depression, um, is different. This one is, is happened much faster. It happened because of a virus. And hopefully, the fingers crossed, is that we might be able to rebound relatively soon. But there's no guarantee. Um, so unemployment really shows you a good measure of how well an economy is, uh, is doing. There are some vocabulary terms I'd like you to know. Um, ooh. So the first one, the first term I'd like you to know is labor force. Uh, the labor force means anyone that's within working age, so 16 um, and up, who are, who are employed, unemployed, and seeking work. So you might be 17 years old right now, but maybe you don't want a job. You're not a part of the labor force. But if you're someone that's working or is looking for a job, um, you'd be a part of the labor force. So that's what we're measuring when we talk about unemployment. It's not like everyone in the country that's not working is only people who are in the labor force. If you're seven, you're not a part of the labor force. If you're 86, you're not a part of the labor force, right? Because you passed retirement age. Um, so if there's like 340 million people in the United States, I'd imagine, I don't know the number of the people in the labor force, but it's over 200 million people, maybe 250. I don't know about that much, but maybe. Um, it's still a significant part of our country. Um, when we talk about employed, these are people who have jobs, full-time, part-time, during the past week, or they're on vacation or sick leave from a regular job. So these are people who have jobs. Don't overthink it, just employed. There are some terms you might not have known or heard of. There's a term known as underemployed. These are people who could work and would like to be working a full week, but can only find part-time work. Um, this term also is used to describe people with high skills who are in low wage jobs that don't require such a, like, a high level abilities. For the example I give is like, think of a trained medical doctor who works as like an Uber driver. Or think of a lawyer who's like a Lyft or Uber driver or works at Starbucks, right? That would make you underemployed. Um, you wouldn't really be fulfilling what your requirement or your ability or skill is. Okay, that's underemployed. Unemployed. Um, these people did not work during the preceding week, <clears throat> but made some effort to find work in the past four weeks, right? So these are people who are actively looking for a job but can't get a job. This is like going to be different from people who are like, ah, I don't want a job. Nah, I'm just going to be homeless. We're going to get to that. Slide 44. People are out of the labor force. These are people who did not work in the past week, did not look for work in the past four weeks. Um, in other words, people who are neither employed nor unemployed. You can think about full-time students maybe. They're just focusing on school. Uh, maybe like a stay-at-home mom or a stay-at-home dad, like an unpaid homemaker. Um, people who are retired. And these are people who, because you could be retired at 50, right, and be out of the labor force. 
Like, for example, LeBron James could retire right now. He would never have to work again a day in his life. He could live off the amount of money he has if he was smart with it. And he'd be out of the labor force, even though he's only, like, in his mid-30s. Um, so that's uh, out of the labor force for you. Uh, and then you have discouraged workers. Uh, these are people who would like to have a job but have not made an effort to find one in the past four weeks. Um, you know, these are people uh, – we often would populate this as like more like the homeless population or, or, or more, I mean, the word itself discouraged people are just not really up on their go to find a job. Um, so that's just some vocabulary I'd like you to know. Um, there's also types of employment. Um, we're going to go a few more slides. We're almost there. Um, the first type is frictional unemployment friction, right? That's friction. Um, this is a type of employment where workers are transitioning between jobs. Um, or think about students who have just graduated who are now looking for jobs, right? Um, or maybe a stay-at-home dad or mom who now the kids are older and they want to go get a job. These are people who are frictionally unemployed because um, of circumstance. Um, frictional employment um, is that type of unemployment. Okay, so keep that in mind. Because you're going to have to be able on the test to identify types of unemployment. You have structural unemployment. This is caused by changes in the structure of demand for consumer goods and technology. For example, people like taxi drivers have become structurally unemployed because of Uber and Lyft. The typewriter companies of America, those employees became structurally unemployment when the computer became popular. Um, before the iPhone, the people who made the other types of flip phones, they became structurally unemployed because a new technology pushed them out of the marketplace. Structural unemployment is only going to happen in a capitalist society, and structural unemployment is just a product of, you know, an economic growth. Um, this is like, you know, when a, uh, um, when a factory moves to another country, right? Because it's cheaper to do business in another country than it is to pay the labor laws we have here in the United States for our structural unemployment, just the way it works. Um, and then let's talk about the last type of unemployment, cyclical. This is the type of unemployment that the, the world, not just the United States, that the world is facing right now. Cyclical unemployment is caused by recession phases. So when the recession happened about 13 years ago, that was a cyclical unemployment. It's not like my mom's business at the time was getting pushed out. She worked at a tile company at the time. Um, it just, there wasn't enough money in the, in the country's marketplace and really around the world because it was a global recession. Um, so people had to make layoffs and that's what happened to my mom along with a lot of other people right now. It's the same thing. The virus has shut down places like restaurants, bars, um, other entertainment venues. If there's no money coming in, you can't pay employees. You can't pay their health benefits. You got to cut them. You got to fire them. You got to furlough them, lay them off. You know, we're going to get to all that too. Um, so it's important to understand that, um, cyclical unemployment is caused by just like recession phases, okay? Um, let's see what else. You've probably heard this term, and I, and I guess I should include this going forward, and I'll put this in the notes. Shoot, I can just do this right now, can't I? Um, other terms this is what I call freestyle teaching. Um, uh, Move that okay. Um, let's make this bigger. So, did I spell that right? Oh, yeah. Furloughed, layoff, and fired. Okay, you probably heard these terms. Being fired means for cause, you were fired for you lost your job because you screwed up. Um, let's say you were really rude to an employee um, 
at a restaurant, you'd get fired for that. Okay. You got to, to be fired, you got to be found guilty of something. You got to be found for cause. That's how you get fired. Okay. Layoff. Lose your job because the company does not have the money to keep you. This is what a lot of people are facing right now. A lot of people haven't been fired from their jobs, but they've been laid off. Um, when you're laid off, it's because it's not your fault. It's just because the company doesn't have money. This is what's happened to a lot of people right now. Um, and then the last one is kind of the most interesting one. It's furloughed. Uh, it's very similar. Lose your job because the company does not have the money to keep you, comma, but when it does, they will bring you back. This has also happened to a lot of people. My sister was furloughed in, during all of this. She lost her job because the company is not making any business right now. So she was furloughed. That means the company is like, you know what? We really like you. We want to keep you, but we just don't have the money. However, we think we're going to have the money soon or in the future. So when we have the money, we're going to bring you back. That's being furloughed. So fired, meaning you're trash, you screwed up. Layoff or furloughed, meaning the company doesn't have money. Difference between a layoff and a furlough. Layoff, you're not coming back. Furlough, you might come back. Hopefully, that's their plan. Might as well throw that in there because I'm sure probably some of you have heard that. Okay, last slide now. Unemployment rate, I kind of showed you this. It's a very easy number to figure out. Unemployment rate is determined by dividing the number of unemployed people in the labor force uh, by the total amount of the labor force. The equation is right there. Unemployed workers divided by total labor force. That's how we figure out their percentage. Math, right? So if there were five, if the labor force was 100 people and five people were unemployed, that means we, that country, that 100 group of people, it would be a 5% unemployment rate. If we look at unemployment rate of the US, it's going to, I mean, it was, look at February, it was really good. Um, it's tough to look at the numbers now because it's still early with this coronavirus thing. But like, let's look at other countries. Like, let's look at Spain. They had about 13.6%. Okay. Let's look at Italy. They're at about 9.7%. What about France? 8.1. What about Greece? Sixteen point four. At one point, they were really high. Twenty-seven point seven. I'll give you a little fun fact. Europeans typically have higher unemployment rates because culturally, Europeans don't have the same gumption that the United States has for work. There is a greater need in the United States to work than there is in European countries. That's because they are very socialist. There's a lot of government programs to help people. So you don't have to work, right? Us here in the United States, you got to make your move. You got to make moves if you want to survive. You got to hustle for a lot. Like it's not easy just kind of like trust, be able to trust the government to survive. Like you got to have to hustle here in the United States to survive. It's what, why the United States is like on the cutting edge of that's why all the biggest businesses are here. That's why we typically have kind of the most developed best type of stuff. Um, is because we're so competitive and we got to keep making moves. In Europe, people are laid back. They don't really need jobs. They kind of just take breaks in the middle of the day. It's a different world over there. It's very different. But then if you go to places like Japan, why don't you just show me on the graph? Um, it's pretty low. It's like us, right? 2.45% um, or South Korea. Give me a graph so it's easy to show. Okay, whatever. 4.8%. Um, and that's even probably larger because of the uh, coronavirus. Um, or if you look at like Singapore, 3.62. That's also another cultural difference. They're more similar to the United States. These are people who, culturally speaking, in those societies, it's a big, like, you know, you got to go work, you got to work hard, you got to work big time. Like in Japan, I think it's, it's like considered like a, uh, a good thing if you fall asleep at your job because you're supposed to be working so hard. Um, so they kind of share that similar mindset as like American people do is like go out, like hustle, work hard. 
So sometimes unemployment rates can be affected culturally speaking. Um, uh, so y'all can play around and look around the world and look at different unemployment rates. You can look at unemployment rates of counties, cities, states, if you wanted to. Um, so it, I'll, like, the whole point of unemployment is it just, it's another way to measure how well a country's doing economically. All right. So that's the end of this video. I'm going to stop the share. Um, couple things. I'm going to post this video in the classroom here in the next I don't know, few minutes. Uh, it's like 1210 right now. And then um, be on the lookout also later because I'm going to have the classroom like information to get on the uh, Zoom conference call tomorrow. Um, be there. You want to show up. It's in your uh, best interest. Um, besides that, stay easy. Be cool. Um, watch this video. And I'll talk to you all later. Take care.